Sci-Fi Blitz Season 2, we made it! Woo! Hope everybody's doing good. Let's make sure you can actually hear me. How's everybody doing? Good chat up. Welcome to Sci-Fi Blitz. This is going to be fun. So uh, this year it's going to be a little different. I won't be in the hot seat as much. And uh, we're going to have some guests, which is very exciting. I uh, hope you're all very excited about it. Now, as always, this is the first time that we're doing Sci-Fi Blitz with this format. Um, so we're using a new system. We're using all kinds of stuff. Uh, so something is bound to go wrong at some point in this stream today. So let us know uh, if there's any problems or errors in the stream. Just throw it in chat. I'll keep my eye on chat the whole time. So I'm watching it. If something bad goes on, you guys can let me know. But I've got everything. Looks like it's all moving. All the parts are working. So uh, very, very excited. Let me uh, go ahead and get our guests on for today so that you can meet them. Let me uh, rope them in. Hello, Jonathan Chunk. What's up? How's it going? Hello. Welcome to Sci-Fi Blitz. So guys, tell us, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. So Chunk, let's start with you. How did you get started in Blender and what are you known for? So I, I got started in Blender about 10 years ago, actually. And um, I started watching CG Cookie, funny enough. Uh, I just wanted to really learn how to make mods because I saw people were making mods for, you know, like Skyrim and games like that. And I thought, well, if just random, you know, run of the mill people like me are doing that, there's got to be software available. And, you know, naturally you kind of fall into Blender because when you're a kid, you don't have money. So. <laughs> Blender's a pretty good choice there. Or when and, you're an adult, uh, right? You know, <laughs> well, you know, free is a good choice pretty much at any stage in your life. And uh, yeah, from there, I've never really looked back. And I'm super happy to be uh, with the CG Cookie team, kind of where I started. Um, what I'm probably more known for right now is I've got a YouTube channel called Get Learnt, where I really demonstrate how to use a lot of different software, but primarily Substance Designer for texturing and making materials and stuff. Um, I've also done, obviously, Let's Build It in Blender here on CG Cookie, which is a lot of fun. We're in season two, so make sure to check uh, that out. Since you just started, yeah, and this those. Yeah, we're, we're just getting started. A lot of, uh, we've got a lot of content to really cover in the next, I think we got five more episodes. And um, I'm doing a lot of more game development uh, focus with, uh, the flip normals platform for people that are more into like game development instead of just, you know, 3d. So you've probably heard my voice at least maybe not seen my face as much, but heard my voice at a, a lot of different platforms. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, it's good to have you on sci-fi blitz. Uh, nice to have you a part of the CG cookie team as well. Jonathan, What's tell up? us about yourself. How did uh, you get started with blender and how do people know you? I got started about 10 years ago as well. That's funny. That's a, almost exactly about the same time. And I got started because I was interested in making 3D games at the time. And I thought that was cool. And then I tried it and realized it was way too hard and then quickly <laughs> gave up. But I found the like particle system part of Blender and like the like physics simulations. And that was like super cool. So I just smashed stuff because I didn't know what else to do. And uh, that got me hooked. So that was fun. And then uh, ended up joining CG Cookie about four and a half ish, five years ago uh, when the Blender market was starting. And so that was a good time. And, and now I do courses on CG Cookie and um, help out with Rotopo Flow and some tools and, and things like that. All right. So you're part of the original Blender Market team, right? Got that yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't do any of the, the hard work, but I, I reviewed some <laughs> models and, and helped make sure it was, it was up awesome. and running. That's great. Well, it's become a big resource for the community and everyone appreciates it. So excellent. Yeah. And if you guys don't know me, uh, if I'm, if you're new to this, uh, thing, so I'm Chris Bailey, I'm a blender YouTuber over at C Bailey film, and I'm also a part of CG cookie. So I'm one of the contributors, uh, just started up, uh, last year, about the same chunk. You were last year too, right? We were both, is it? Yep, yeah. Around yeah. the same so time, we're, really. Chunk and I are the new kids on the block. We're the, we're the YouTube, uh, guinea pigs. So it's, it's been up to us to throw content at the uh, YouTube channel for CG cookie. And we've been having a good time with that. So, Perfect chance to uh, get these two guys from in in the house in the CG Cookie Club to go head to head for our first episode of Sci-Fi Blitz. So everybody in chat, they can see your chat messages. So you throw stuff in chat, they can see it. I can see it. Uh, we may not all be typing at the same time, but we can see what you're saying. So loving all the uh, the encouragement and the feedback there. It's good to see everybody excited. We got 50 people here, concurrent viewers. I think last year our record was like what, like 100 maybe. Let's smash that. Let's let's smash nice, that this nice. season. 
All right, guys. So uh, just to recap for the rules, um, so everybody's been voting. Um, let me just check, pull up what our, uh, let's see what the winner is. So we've been voting on, we've got Tron Wipeout, Battlestar Galactica Alert Fighter um, Launch, and Goodnight Hal 2001 Space Odyssey reference. One in chat if you've seen 2001 Space Odyssey. Just curious. Anyways, the winner is Tron Wipeout with 50% of the vote. We had 251 people vote. So we're going to be doing Tron nice. Wipeout today, guys. So that's a challenge. You have to come up with a scene or an image that is your interpretation of that theme. Any, any way you interpret it, it's up to you. Uh, but that's the, that's the theme. We have one hour. I'll set the timer. And the rules are uh, no external models or assets or texture files, no add-ons. So Blender vanilla. So all that muscle memory that you've built up using Node Wrangler, out the door. And <laughs> we are all going to watch you thrive, I'm sure, live here in front of us all. Yeah, that's so. the word for it, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. the word for it. All right, guys, so let me uh, let me just get set up and then we will we'll jump in. I will be jumping back and forth between you throughout the whole time to kind of check in on how you're going. And uh, again, everybody uh, in chat, let us know what you're thinking. If you've got questions, throw them. I'll be very firmly looking at chat so um, we can uh, hopefully be able to manage that well enough. Let me go ahead and get everybody's screen shared up. So uh, let's see. Let's get uh, so let's get the default cube, guys. So file new, default cube scene. Oh, let me hold a. There we go. Yeah, there, <laughs> there you go. All right. So, all right. Let's uh, get my timer up. There it is, the big timer. All right, everybody, ready? Let's get a countdown in chat. Three. Two, one, season one, episode one, Sci-Fi Blitz starts now. We're off. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Let's see what they do. All right, we're gonna start on Jonathan's screen. It's going for the uh, cube out of here quick. Yeah, delete it fast. Now, guys in chat, just so you know, um, the, we're, we're not gonna mute anybody. So these guys are gonna talk whenever they have something they want to say. Um, but we've got about a, uh, about a one second ping between us. So uh, there's a bit of delay, so we might talk over each other. Uh, so just, just give us a bit of grace there. We got a double circle set up here with Jonathan. Uh, he's, he's, he's opting for some modeling. I'm guessing it's a Tron bike. Let's see how Chuck's going. We've uh, started I'll off with that. two All splines. right, so Top I got curve. totally something completely different than what Jonathan's doing. Um, nice. So I've got, uh, yeah, completely two circles set up. <laughs> Um. All right. Going for some bevel and some subdivision surface. Yeah, Back you know it. If anybody watches, let's build it in Blender. You got to get the bevel subsurf. Got to get the bevel subsurf. I honestly didn't really use that before you uh, started using that in in uh, Let's Build. It oh, in really? Blender. And after that, I'm like, oh, that's genius. Why have I not done that? Oh, so easy. It just makes everything so much easier. Yeah, I, I think I kind of stole it from somebody else I saw online, but I went, ah, oh, that's actually not a bad idea. So I'm going to take that, claim it as kind of <laughs> mine, <laughs> refine it, My and claim it as idea. mine. Yeah. Really nice work on the subdivision surface there. It's looking really nice, chunk like the smooth curves there. Yeah. Jonathan's going for the polygon draw technique. See if it pays off. Okay. How's the stream quality chat? Can you guys see the screens well enough? Be curious to see how well that plays out. Elmo says two donuts. That's right. And Jake blended in YouTube says, I'm sensing a pattern. There's definitely a pattern to the start here. Oh, that's clever. Mirror modifier, bam. Already have two sided. That almost looks like a bike. I mean, you're pretty much done, Jonathan. Whew. I like Chunk's more methodical approach. This is looking good. I'm just trying to think like Tron, but Wipeout, right? So like what, what would like that wipeout? actually, well, I don't know. That, is that up for interpretation, <laughs> right? I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Is it a Tron bike with punching gloves on it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Badagas asks, what is Bevel Subsurf? I think uh, Bevel, Bevel Subsurf is just a reference to using the Bevel modifier and the subsurface modifier. Is that correct, guys? 
Yeah, using so both together. bevel subsurf is uh, a combination that I try and use as much as I can because it gives you a bit of more control over um, sharpening corners for hard surface things. So place your bevel modifier over top of your subdivision surface modifier. And then using the limit uh, method of weight, you can actually go in. I don't know if you can go into my uh, stream here, but you can see yeah, I've got gotcha. some blue lines. And um, I can go ahead and actually sharpen things out or flat, you know, kind of smooth them out. I have more control over the edges, which is going to really uh, just give you more control uh, over, you know, the long term. Because if you go ahead and start adding like retaining edge loops and doing edge slides, uh, it just it gets way too hard to manage. It's very cool. Yeah, so let us know if you guys have any other questions as these uh, these two are plowing through it. We fielding questions. Turn this into a live tutorial just to add pressure. Force yeah. them to stop and explain <laughs> what they're doing. Yeah, ask ask Chunk a bunch of questions. Ask yeah, just keep lot. asking oh. questions. That's right. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I audit, I already anticipate not being able to finish because I just would rather explain what I'm doing. <laughs> Badagas says, that's brilliant. I've been control B beveling all this time. It looks so much cooler. Yeah, control B bevel. It's fun when you need it, but the, the modifier really saves you for big models. So yeah. Glow 3 ds uh, So no image planes 3D. allowed. No, no reference in Blender, but on second, uh, on a second monitor, I'm sure low. Well, hey, I can't see all their monitors, so who knows? Get uh disconnect there. I'm doing this all from memory. Look at this. These guys are great. <laughs> now you can have an off-screen oh, reference, yeah. guys. It's just you can't bring anything into Blender. Yeah, Ben Ben also asks, is there a reference? So they have to do this from memory. No, they can use reference. So you can Google images and stuff. You just can't bring in things from, from outside. So no pre-made stuff. That's the catch. So so Jonathan's making good progress here with his little, um, you know, he's used the whole trick of taking a vertex and then extruding that vertex to draw out a shape in a, a flat um, perspective. I realized my original circle with like the default um, mm -hmm. of like 32 vertices was like way too many. So I just deleted it and started over. Nice. So you're trying to get your vertex count to match up a bit so that you can easily connect things. Um, Sub to do the work. That's right. Looks good. Let's have a look at Chunk. How's he going? So Chunk's doing a similar method of building it out. So he's, um, instead what he's done is he's, He's placed the bevel and the subsurf on already, um, and he's building it from there. And instead of doing that sort of the draw method where he's just extruding a single vertex out, he's he's sort of modeling it out uh, on an edge basis, so like on, on a plane moving forward, um, which is another way to kind of get specific control. So it's kind of like modeling with more detail right at the start, whereas Jonathan's kind of started with less detail. And then he's adding that in as you go. So. I really don't know how you did this all by yourself last season. <laughs> Seriously. I don't yeah. understand how you function. I, I had a mental breakdown, so you know it's fine. I, okay. Uh, I'm human. It, it was like it was per pretty, each it was episode or each right? Yeah, I know. I got really stressed every week. It was pretty hard that I didn't actually have a breakdown, thankfully. But nice. Take a shape. Jonathan, looking good. So now Chunk, Chuck's still on that back wheel. I mean, it's been, we haven't had full 10 minutes yet though. So I don't think it's, it's cause to worry. I think he's doing fine. It's got a good pace. You can worry if he wants though, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys feel free yeah, to start psyching each other. Uh, meanwhile, Jonathan's got the entire landscape modeled, 12 bikes, and he's got a what? start in the, <laughs> wow, a start countdown timer shader. That's so cool. Look at that. You're going to do a full animation. Yeah, it, it would take me far longer than an hour to get that done. <laughs> I, I, a week, maybe? That would be generous. Let's see if I can get a nice uh, double screen thing going. We can see both of them side by side. I'm having fun clicking all these buttons. Can you tell, Jeff? 
Globox 3D says the cycle might be the longest model to asset, uh, model, it's the longest asset to model gravy after that. I think you're right, Globox. It's all going to be gravy from there. It's a pretty good speed modeling, guys. If you want some hard surface tips, just watch, watch what these two are doing. One thing I'm super curious about if like other people end up uh, jumping on the show, I want to see like the real time pace of their modeling because like when you watch a video, it's like it's never what it actually looks like um, when you're when you're working. No, a lot gets edited out. That's very true. And you've like practiced a million times, and you're all set. So Jonathan's now filling in his faces. So he's selecting the vertices one at a time to create polygons. And then he's pressing F to fill. And that's just fleshing out the model so that it's not just these empty vertex groups. It's just uh, it's now solid mesh. And he's refining a shape. Again, keeping it basic. And we're going to rely on most likely a subdivision surface to smooth things out. Whereas Chunk, let's come over and look at his. So he's modeling out in more detail um, and it's looking good. So he's got the the double wheel sort of, you know, outer barrel thing coming together nicely. And you, you can see the difference of modeling when you have all those subdivision and bevel modifiers like already on. The difference between what he and Jonathan are doing is really interesting. So his modeling, he's actually doing it in a way where he's seeing the effect of those modifiers in place uh, in real time so that he can actually kind of model it and have a look at what the final result's going to look like at the same time. How's everybody doing in chat? People having a good day? Good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. Let us know what country are you from watching today? Throw some countries in chat. Let's find out where everybody is in the world. I'm in Australia. And it's sunny. It's warm. Canada, and it is absolutely freezing cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's freezing for most people, I think, right now. I think uh, I'm right in the middle. It's not too cold, but it's very windy and a little chilly. We've got somebody from Toronto, yeah, Nodes of Nature. We've got uh, oh, Neil Toronto, from there you go. Indy, from, from, Delhi, from Delhi in India. Space crawler from Germany. Got Alex in Bulgaria. Got some. Got a Belgian. David. Wes is in Chicago-ish. Is that an official location, Wes? Chicago-ish. Globox says this is such a fantastic show. Thank you. Great idea. You're welcome. Thanks to Jonathan and Chunk for being in the hot seat today. Good job, guys. Woo. Yeah. All right. Let's switch over to Chunk's screen, but not Jonathan's for a while. So Chunks is really starting to look like a bike now. Yeah, you're just trying to flatter me. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful bike. Looks, he says it's 34 degrees here in Wisconsin, and it feels like spring. Oh, well, hey, two two degrees over freezing is always good, right? I assume that's Fahrenheit. Swing over back to Jonathan's. I did not plan this out well, and so I got these uh, these nice triangles. So you can see what's happened here. So Jonathan's put the subsurface modifier on after creating his model. So unlike Chuck, he's not able to see what it was going to look like until he gets to this point. And so now he's getting these weird artifacts because he's got some triangles. He's got some you know, vertices that probably have a few too many edges connecting in, things like that. Um, and it's uh, causing some weird artifacts. Uh, so it can be a bit of a gotcha. Um, but the other side of that argument is you could say it's also a lot faster to model this way, um, just to flesh something out. Um, <clears throat> Chuck's definitely allotting his time, you know, carefully to favor the back tire. That's. Yeah, nobody was interested in the uh, you know low poly default cube option, eh? That's right. That one wasn't gonna. That wasn't a uh, an easy sell. Super detail. Minecraft version. <laughs> yes, the yeah. Minecraft yeah, version of Tron. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Wes says, I hear lots of clicking. I'm curious what these guys are thinking as they're modeling these cycles. It's the boss going, all right, guys, talk more. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I know this is supposed to be like a hyped up show, like high energy. I don't know how to, how do you, how do you yell while modeling? I'm not sure. Sorry, we don't get high energy until we get to the final five minutes. Oh yeah. Then you'll see screaming then. Yeah. <laughs> Shaka on uh, YouTube asks, is this a stylized bike or are we going for realism guys? What's your, what's your, what's your angle? Uh, I'm, I'm going for realism. whatever gets the job done. So gets yeah. the job that done. option. Jonathan, will be I'm going to leave it or? up to interpretation. Exactly. For those of you who are watching, if you're not familiar with how difficult it is to uh, talk and model live, these guys will let you know how painful it can be. Oh, I should have split this into multiple pieces instead of trying to model it as one bike. Uh, oh, eh, maybe there's, hmm, I don't know. Would have been good. The question is, do you have enough time? Do you commit? This is, I really got myself into a corner right away. Oh gosh, all right. So it makes sci-fi blitz fun. So how are you gonna get out of that corner, Jonathan? What's your plan? Uh, I'll probably give up and go home. Okay, that's a good idea. Great. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Oh. Summer Blitz season one, season two. Hey, you got half the job done. I, I assume you're already at home, so. <laughs> true, true. That's true, yeah. Not oh, wrong. What are you working on right now, Chuck? Uh, you know what? I had a total revamp of what I was going to do. I think what I was going to do is, uh, I don't want to give Jonathan too many, uh, you know, advantages over me, but I was going for more of a, like, destructed, basically, Tron bike, but I thought that's that's going to be way too tough. So I think what I'm going to do is a pretty tight, like, vignette shot of, uh, you know, just like a specific area. So okay. we're going to see if that's going to really pan out. All right, cool. How are we doing on making, time, by the way? Making, oh, what's that? Say that again, John. How are we doing on time? You guys are doing pretty good. So uh, we've got 40, about 45 minutes left. So it's been your first 15. It feels like Jake it's Blended been both says like five seconds and 80 minutes. Yeah. Jake Blended says, you can do it, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> not to pick favorites or anything. No, no, not at all. <laughs> he needs the support. It's okay. I get it. <laughs> Look, see, is asking, is this going to be every Sunday? Uh, at the moment, not. We're, we're still going to do every second. So, uh, so not next Sunday, but the Sunday after we'll do another one. So, But hey, if the show's popular, everyone likes it. Who knows? We will be able to increase it to every single Sunday. We just and just get Chunk and Jonathan again and again and just put them under the bus every time. Yeah. It's gonna be great. yeah. <laughs> every Sunday through Wednesday um, is actually what we're going to do if it gets popular enough. That's right. Every day. I'll quit my day job. We're just going to be we'll just, streaming this. We'll do twenty-four we'll hour just... challenges. <laughs> uh, Nahul uh, says I'm with Chunk. So we got we got some people batting for Chunk too. That's good. Nodes of nature as well said earlier. Gotcha. You got this. Nodes of nature also says, Jonathan, split the silhouette into groups and expand on each part. That's a good tip. James says, in Kenya, it's 4 a.m. Decided to watch these guys instead of sleeping. Oh, wow. Thanks, wow. James. Really appreciate it. That's dedication. Thank you. <laughs> Shakama says Chris's hair is looking more amazing than Chuck's. What's up with that, Chunk? Answer for yourself, what? Chuck. What's going on? What's it? <laughs> I'm growing. I'm I am growing my mullet out this year, so <laughs> it's it's got to you know take some time. Takes time. Yes, I believe this is the same individual that commented when I uh, cut my hair, wasn't it? Right, I recognize the username there. <laughs> It's a it's a hot topic for Wonder Tutorials. I tell you what, it is. It, <laughs> we usually cut that stuff out. Yeah. So what are you working on right now, Jonathan? What's your uh, current approach? You... Uh, my current approach is to hopefully just fix this, and then um, once I actually have something that's like usable topology, then it should be pretty easy to to like move around and like shape. Um, and then when I'm done with that, then I'm gonna switch focus and make a quick environment, and focus on like getting a scene together or like getting 
what I want where. Mm -hmm. um, and see how it goes. Sounds good. But the uh, quick fix for my problem was just to add another loop around the side, essentially. Um, so even if the topology in the middle is kind of garbage, it's fine because it's not like on the actual edge of the model itself. Right. So you're trying to focus on keeping a nice clean edge or profile of your, your model. That's a good tip. So he's finishing out filling out those faces there. I'm trying to get that side to have a nice smooth topology. Let's have a look at what Chunk's up to. So he's continuing to play with the weights of his edges. Uh, to get yeah, the right it's look. not going how I uh, how I really want it. So I don't know what's going on there, but I'm going to keep forging on. I'm actually going to use a new trick right here that I uh, just learned in my <laughs> previous video. Because um, I've been insetting like this, right? And on the mirror modifier, yeah. if you do that, then you got to move everything over. Right. But if you inset and then hit B, uh, it's actually going to uh, turn the boundary off. So I learned that actually from... Uh, a very helpful commenter on my previous video. So thank you, whoever that was. I unfortunately forgot the name and you might not even be watching this, but very helpful because I did that like a hundred times. That is good. I didn't know that. B, let me write that down. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Read the fine print, eh? When you're doing all of these like uh, useful tools, if you can see on my screen there, it got this nice text up at the top. It's actually pretty useful and you know pays off to read what uh, the tool tips are. Good tip today from Chunk. Read the tooltips. There you go, buddy. Yeah. Got your money's worth. <laughs> Bruno Lima says Jonathan's uh yeah, Bruno Lima says Jonathan's topology is looking wonderful. Can't wait to see the final result. Oh, that's that's nice. Nice oh, kind words. Thank you. We love kind encouraging. encouraging. Trying to read was, out every I was not inclined to uh, ag agree, but <laughs> there you I'll go. Someone thinks it's looking great. <laughs> Gladys just walked into the stream and said, What's going on here? <laughs> Just a bit of live sci-fi blitz action. Yeah. And Jake Blended says, that's my takeaway today. Read the tooltips. Frederick asks, have you yep. guys ever tried doing 3D modeling in VR? What do you guys think? Have you ever tried that? No. I tried Tilt I... Brush. That was like fun, but. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I've tried I, Tilt Brush That would well. be kind of trippy. Mm. It's like cool because it's super immersive, but it's like not practical at all. Like it's incredibly yeah. slow. Mm. I could see so that. I could never like work like that, but it's like a fun, just like mess around on a Saturday. Kind Who's of the Blender YouTuber? Is it Louis Demont that does does some stuff? I think I've seen him do some videos on modeling in VR. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so you can really see the difference of these two approaches, everybody. So um, starting out like with Jonathan, right, where he drew out the vertices and he drew out the shape. And then added in the sub sub diff uh, sub D and all that stuff later as a modifier, you know. And he ran into these problems with the the faces not quite working, and he's been able to kind of wrestle it back into a place where he's got the topology that he wants. And then Chunk, who's started with all those on, and he's kind of working in a much more detailed level. Um, so he's focusing on this back section of the of the Tron bike, and he's really trying to get those details working for him um, while using all those things. You can see like how how both those approaches kind of yield a different workflow and a different result. Um, Dewan Entertainment asks, what is Sci-Fi Blitz? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. Sci-Fi Blitz is a new show that we've got. This is actually season two, but it's a competitive show. We've got two Blender artists going head to head to try and create a sci-fi image based on a theme voted on by the community. They've got one hour to do it. No add-ons, no external anything. Everything's gotta be with vanilla Blender. And uh, the idea is to come up with a sci-fi image based on the uh, the theme in one hour. And we are at we've we've got 37 minutes left, guys. 37 minutes left. Now, as a rule of thumb, when we hit that 30 minute mark, that's a great time to start thinking about a camera and some kind of material. Sounds good. Or not. You know, budget your time however you want. <laughs> All right, let's see what Jonathan's doing. Jonathan's adding a, a grid to his scene. Uh, he's got an array of, what was that? Oh, it's a plane. Okay, so he started with a plane and now he's got two arrays and he's laying those that grid out now with these two arrays.
Faux Sushi says, pretty rad. I bet it's rad. David S says, modeling in VR, that's for season three. Yeah, that's right. That's what we should do. Force our guests to go into VR and model for the first time. <laughs> That'd be pretty intense. That would be, <laughs> That'd be great. It would be fun to watch. It would be fun to watch. So Jonathan, what's your plan right now with this grid? Uh, making some ground, making an uh, en environment. Hopefully make some walls and then um, just use a curve, make a little arena. So feel like at this point I've kind of I've kind of fallen behind with the bike. Like there's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna beat Chunk on that one. So if I make more of a scene and try to make it like more epic, then I might have a fighting chance. We'll see. I'd have a funny chance. Let's find out, everybody. Thirty six minutes left. It's a good strategy. Chunk, what's your strategy? How are you going? So you've got this this back wheel. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna trying to think of composition now? right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think of composition, trying to think of, well, one, see how my materialing skills is going to be in uh, Blender. I haven't really mm -hmm. touched a lot of the material shader stuff in Blender for a little bit, so I feel Sorry, like... You live in, uh, live in substance, gonna... right? That's your home turf. Yeah, substance. I'm a... I'm pretty much a texturing guy like in other software. So we're going to really see how it goes, but I'm not too worried uh, yet. We'll see what I still got. What? 35 minutes. I think yeah. at around like 15 minutes, I'll start to really freak out and you'll see a different side of chunk here. Oh, good. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So, um, Chakama asks, is chat voting? Uh, you're welcome to uh, place your opinion in chat, but uh, officially in Sci-Fi Blitz, we don't have a winner. We just have two winners. For, Everybody wins. For showing up today. Everybody, I even win. I get to win today. <laughs> and you win, chat. Chat wins. Actually, chat wins. You guys win, because you guys get the content. So Wes is pointing out that we've got 95 people watching your every move. Kind Ooh. words from the, well, from thanks, the peanut Wes. gallery there. Yeah, but, yeah. Thanks, <laughs> no <Wes>. pressure. <laughs> Again, if you're just joining us today, uh, this is Sci-Fi Blitz. We've got Chunk and Jonathan going head to head. Be sure to check out CG Cookie um, if you guys haven't before. It's definitely worth your time. CGCookie.com, a lot of amazing tutorials and stuff there. You can get a free trial if you go over and sign up. So check that out. All three of us are from the CG Cookie team. We're kicking off the sci-fi blitz season with the cg cookie team so but uh stay tuned more episodes coming so every second week we'll have a new episode and we will have different guests not just from cg cookie from all over youtube and other places so blender artists that you know and love today's prompt jay corral is asking is um uh tron wipeout is the the phrase that won the theme that won so we'll see how they interpret Tron wipeout. So it looks like we've got uh, Jonathan now starting to flesh out a bit of an environment. And Chunk is going for the, so Chunk, you're focusing pretty much on the back section of the vehicle, right? That's going to be kind of your shot. You're going for like a tight shot. Is that right? Yep. I got a tight shot right in here. Yeah. I'm going to so try and play around a little bit. Chuck's going for detail and focusing on this back section. Jonathan is on the other hand, taking the tact of going for less detail in his model but going for more of a wide shot. So more of an environment scene kind of thing. So there are advantages and disadvantages to both approaches. So we will see how it plays out. But uh, right now, it looks like Jonathan's doing something pretty cool with a NURBS path. So Jonathan, talk us through what's 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 going on right now. You've got this wall bit. Is that like a bit of geometry and you're arraying it with curve or what's the... Yep. So I just have this one like tiny little column Yep. And then uh, I'm arraying it and then putting it along a curve and then fitting it to the curve and then mirroring it. Um, so if I just edit this one curve from the top, then it's going to make me a nice little wall. Nice. Nice speedy technique there. So Perfect. you didn't catch all that. So that's the array modifier with the curve modifier after it and then the mirror modifier. So all three of those modifiers. I had really high hopes for the bike, though, but <laughs> I don't think I can get that one in, in time. Uh, the bikes have too many curves, man. There's just so many curves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I should have started curious. out with multiple pieces and modeled each piece mm. uh, 
like modeled the seat, modeled all that stuff, but oh well. Owner says, I haven't watched the Tron yet. Shame on me. No shame. No shame. We don't, we don't, we don't, uh, sci-fi shame here. Yeah. Right. I haven't seen something, but, uh, <laughs> one in chat, if you have seen Tron, the original, the first, and everyone gets a cookie. I just put a cookie in chat. Thanks again for joining us today, everybody. Sci-Fi Blitz episode one, season two, kicking it off with a new format, the head to head format. Let us know what you think of it. Give us a comment on YouTube. And uh, let us know if you like this format. And uh, we'll keep doing it. That's the plan. Lots of ones. Maybe I should have said put a, uh, and I'll put a zero in chat if you've never seen the original Tron. Some nice material uh, action there, Chunk. So he's um, switched over to the shading viewport. And he's starting to plan out some materials. He's got the standard principal BSDF shader. And he's taking the base color down to a black. Um, and he's uh, just experimenting now with different materials try and figure out how he's going to make it look yeah gone for a nice super metallic yeah, i need a look better tron environment here oh maybe something like that i don't know nice yeah can we count a final render out of the material viewport i mean i guess we could it counts oh that's what i was going to do anyways so yeah <laughs> hey man it, it's a good way to get an hdri in there i guess <laughs> I yeah you know what actually what I've been doing lately for uh, rendering and stuff is I'll just go into uh, material preview and then just go to view viewport render image here and then obviously you don't have that kind of stuff but go ahead and just render it out there because it's you know what you see is what you get kind of deal um, nice and it, it looks good enough at least for the stuff I've been doing but you know if you're looking for really high quality stuff you're probably still going to want to stick well actually i think evie just got like a new depth of field or something yes. didn't it that's right evie yeah. just got upgraded its depth of field now is even better so it looks amazing nice. depth of field's always been the one barrier for me that sort of separated it from uh cycles in terms of like visual look i mean naturally it doesn't have global illumination the things aren't bouncing around in the same way but so overall mm -hmm. like if you compare the two images often you can't tell the difference except for the depth of field so it's pretty exciting Chunk has got uh, his his little arena. He's, he's shaped it out. He's closed it off now with his curve modifier. And now it looks like he's in EV render view mode and starting to think about materials. Now we are at 29 minutes and 30 seconds left, everybody. Uh, okay. <laughs> Post Sushi wants to know, uh, you're working off uh, with uh, screen references. Uh, yeah, you guys have screen references, right? Like off screen, you've got some reference material. Yeah, we pulled some, some yeah. Google images and just shoved it off to the side. So they've got references from the yeah. films probably. Like, uh, well, from the films primarily, I think I've got like a, I don't even know what this vehicle is. It's, I think it's like a sci-fi mock-up. It's not even Tron related, but uh, close enough. Give you a general mood board. Nice. All right, so it looks like Jonathan's using cycles. Is that no, right? this is Evie. Oh, it's it is just, Evie? Okay. Uh, it's the stream it's quality. Oh, okay, I saw that the the noise. I thought, like, oh, using cycles. What kind of a machine do you have? Live streaming with cycles. <laughs> Not that bold. Not that bold. Not that bold. And that's all right. I wouldn't be. All right, making good progress, everybody. Let's have a look at what Chuck's doing. So he's working on his uh, emission shader trail at the end here, trying to get the the right tail light. Yeah. Yeah, do we uh we don't happen to have any like transparent beam tutorials on CG Cookie that I could quickly look up, do we? <laughs> That's a great question, Wes. <laughs> do we have that on CG Cookie? Probably. I mean, how many how many video tutorials are actually on CG Cookie? Wes, do you have that number? Or Jonathan, do you know? How many tutorials? Yeah. Um a lot. I don't know. It depends because like what do you count as a tutorial? Is like a lesson in a course count as a tutorial or is it like per chunk of idea or I'd say chunk of that idea, here, but uh, <laughs> probably like what six billion? No, that's that's not an official count. Uh, Frederick asks, "What's everyone's speciality? CG animations for movies, video games, modeling, three D, print CAD. What do you guys say is your speciality?" I thought it was modeling until today. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that looking. one. Yeah. Um. I, uh, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm a bit of a 3D generalist, really. 
Um, I'm more so in the video games atmosphere world. Um, that's really more so what uh, I do for work at least. Um, but primarily if you've seen my YouTube channel, get learned, right. I'm more in like texturing substance designer, substance painter kind of stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of nice actually with the let's build it in blender. Cause I get to kind of do it all. And like I said, being a 3d generalist, so I enjoy, um, being able to just kind of go through different, uh, parts or stages or processes in the workflow, which is pretty cool. But um, yeah, I'm kind of with Jonathan. I thought modeling was a little bit of my specialty, but uh, we're going to see after this uh, episode's done. I okay, just put a link to uh, Chuck's YouTube channel in the chat if you're curious. Hey. Jonathan, what about you? A lot of people are joining us now that weren't here for the intro. What's your oh, specialty? Oh yeah, sorry, I was uh, I was zoning out. I... That's all right. You you got a job <laughs> to do, man. So you you focus on your job. That's. <laughs> but when you have brain capacity, tell us about yourself. Oh um, well, I'm Jonathan Lampell, the uh, fourth Jonathan to join CG Cookie. I think somewhere <laughs> around there. Is there four? Wow, there's a lot. Um, and I make Blender courses. <laughs> Mostly 3D modeling and, I don't know, material texturing, all that stuff. And, yeah, I don't know. I uh, I used to make a bunch of, like, physics courses or physics, like, tutorials back in the day. Oh, cool. Um, on, like, a super like old YouTube channel. Physics simulation stuff or, like, real mm -hmm. physics, like, actual? No, like, physics simulations. Yeah, cool. Um, how, to, how to explode stuff. Nice. That's always a good topic, exploding things. Yeah, yeah if, you've ever, um, if you've ever been on to CG Cookie, uh, if you've started your free trial, you would have become very familiar with Jonathan. He's on there for a lot of different courses. Any courses that you've done recently, Jonathan, you're excited about? Pipe up. Um, I was pretty happy with the recent like fundamentals courses of shading mm -hmm. and, and lighting. Um, but I really had a lot of fun with the first person shooter course that came out like last year-ish. Mm -hmm. And that one was just fun to make. I think um, it's a little bit more advanced, but like I had to, I had to personally learn learn some new stuff in order to get that one out the door, and so that's always fun. Very cool. Yeah, it's nice when you have to learn something to do a tutorial. That's every tutorial for me. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do this. How do I do that? I don't know. I go watch I five tutorials, yeah. then I go make my own. <laughs> Making good progress. Tell us about what you're working on, Jonathan. How's it? What's your uh, current objective? Uh, my current objective is just to make this shiny and, and very glowy, and hopefully look cool in the background. Um, hopefully, make it look like there's at least stuff going on, and hopefully, with like a procedural texture or something, you might look like there's uh, something outside. Nice. I'm liking the uh, the little uh, runner that you've got in the base of your wall. It's a nice little detail. It really brings Thanks. it out. It's a good way of like making simple details work for you. So that kind of double line emission thing. Um, and that little bit of transparency as well is quite nice on the walls. It's pretty cool. Chunk, how are you uh, going, man? It's a reference, so. <laughs> nice. That's it. That's the advantage um, of using a reference. What are you working on, Chunk? What's your current objective? Just materials. 23 minutes. Trying to get a good read of, uh, okay. Trying to get a good read of like just the the materials themselves, the emission, the composition of it all together. I'm trying to break this up. It's just, it's way too like black and glossy. Um, and I'm trying to, you know, my non-extensive knowledge of the procedural textures that we have in Blender, uh, trying to figure out how I can use any of these for some pretty cool designs. Like uh, get the check. Oh, I guess I could use a checker. All right, we might be onto something here, fellas. Might be onto something. Look out, check your texture time, everybody. Buckle up. Yeah, yeah. Never have I been more excited to have a checker texture. <laughs> yes, it's the challenge of working outside of your comfort zone. Doing a great job. It's looking awesome. Both of you guys are really killing it today. 
A lot of pressure to make an image in an hour. A lot of pressure. Just to remind everybody, check out CG Cookie. CGCookie.com if you haven't already. There's tons of cool stuff there. You can also follow us at CG Cookie on Twitter. Because, hey, man, Twitter's hip, and everyone's using it these days. That's true. That's very true. And uh, also, if you're not familiar with me, so um, those who are new to the stream, I'm Chris Bailey. I'm a Blender YouTuber at C Bailey Film. I do sci-fi Blender stuff, and I'm a part of the CG Cookie team, just like these guys. You can find my stuff there in chat. So check us all out. We love making stuff in Blender. All right, now we're almost at the 20-minute mark. One of the hardest things to do is to budget your time. So actually thinking about, all right, you know, you got 20 minutes left. What is it you're going to focus on? And how can you take your shot to the next level? How can you really land it? Because often things don't really land until the last minute when the good image. Uh, and there's a lot of time in between where you kind of flounder a little bit trying to get an image to land. And uh, it can be discouraging. But part of what's being a really good Blender artist or any kind of artist, especially CG, is knowing when and how far you can push an image. So when to give up on an image. I think a lot of news, new people starting out, um, they really give up too soon because uh, they might get to an image like, you know, and think, oh, it's not quite good enough yet. It should be a whole lot better. And learning to, to understand how far you can push an image is a really powerful skill. Um, definitely what's running on and running around in the minds of these guys right now is how to push it that little extra bit to make it start coming alive. So how to make Jonathan's something starting to lay down a camera. Incredibly simple, look actually cool is the, is the goal. Yep. That's it. Yep. But you can actually, you can do a lot with it. That's true, that's true. How are you feeling right now, Jonathan? What are you, are you liking your I'm feeling so a bit better. I'm feeling like this might turn into something. Okay. What's what's your indication for that? What's what's the part that you're feeling like, all right, this is working? Um, Just the fact that like an environment does seem to be helping a lot. And that I can, if I just throw enough effects at it, uh, hopefully it'll look cool. <laughs> and I think I can do that reasonably quickly. Time will tell. Time will tell. Time will tell. Looking good, guys. How's everybody doing in chat? Let us know. If you have any questions in chat, if things come up, and you'd like to know what's going on, let us know. Take the question to the team. So Chunk, you're working on some uh, emissions, looking good. You've got your brick texture and you're applying that yes. to, is that a, what is that? Is that, that's actually the texture or is that actually grid object that you're applying it to? Or is that just going onto a plane? That's, that's it's just on a plane using the brick oh, texture cool. and then I'm using it as a mission. So I'm kind of like basically using it as a bit of like a wireframe almost, um, but I have more control over uh, well, if I go ahead here, right, I can kind of, oh, nice. I'm yeah. going to have to try and link these up, though. The problem, ah, it's, it's uh, actually, I like the double. I don't want to influence it. Yeah, that. that's, that's <laughs> a little, it's a little accidental. We'll see. Can I control Z that? All right. I'm trying to look You're for safe. color right now, though. You're safe. DWOT Entertainment says, if I did this, it would take a week. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty impressive, guys. Honestly, it's same. Serious yeah. <laughs> Serious the progress. Pace at which you like get faster in in 3D is like kind of wild because when you first start out, things take like weeks, months, <laughs> years, and then eventually, like over time, it's like, oh, I could do that in like a couple hours, maybe. But not a full Tron scene, that's for sure. No. <laughs> Unless it's like completely black, then I can I can do that one. That's one I can do in about an hour, or just like blown out with a mission. So Jonathan, right now you're doing your uh, your tail for your your bike. Um, I see that you've used a really narrow small plane, and you're um, arraying that out. Are you gonna be curving it around, or what's the what's yeah? The I want to make it nice and, nice and smooth. Cool. So the thinner that is, the smoother it'll be. Let's give that a curve modifier and see if it works. Vladis says we should be playing Daft Punk in the background. That's a great idea. One of my first like 
ideas that I had was like I should make the Daft Punk helmets and <laughs> be awesome. like DJing away, but I don't know if I could do that in time. Yeah. Less than twenty minutes, you guys. We have an hour to minutes do left. This. Oh God, Chris, you're freaking me out. No panic, panic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good though. You've got you've got a grid chunk. You've got some, uh, you know, you've got a that full scene technically like now. Cyber. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, everything's way too dark though. Actually, I should probably play around with some HDRIs now that I think about it. Chuck's going for the uh, material preview mode as his final render so that he can use the hdris that come built in so if you don't know that you can go to material preview mode and it gives you a rendered mode that's pretty much the same as ev but uh it uses some extra stuff like um uh, there's a couple of built-in hdri textures which if you're not familiar they're like a world texture that helps to light your scene by adding something that things can reflect um and uh it's a, it's a nice little technique for creating realism apparently in, in the recent versions you can do that in rendered mode too so that's what i'm doing now is uh, I'm just in rendered mode and I'm using mm -hmm. the HDRI, but you just uncheck oh, nice. uh, scene world and you're good to go. There you go. Very cool. Built in HDRIs. If only you could actually render with them though, that would make it um, probably more useful. <laughs> oh, you can't render with it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, you could do what Chunk did, uh, the uh, the method of just saving if the you screen. Do the, yeah. Yeah, if you chip. do the view render image, you can get it, but you can miss out on um, a lot of the uh well you can't composite with the uh the viewport render unfortunately so if you do like compositing stuff it won't actually load mm -hmm. into the compositor right good to know the limitations got a question from uh all right sorry i just lost the question where is it uh ben ben asks why an array instead of a single long plane so jonathan asking about your uh your the ground your, yeah the thing behind your car Oh, or maybe um, the ground. Both. Ben, which one? Let us know. The thing behind the car. Or the oh, because car. I want to make I want to make a couple of them. And so if I do it this way, then I can just super quickly just duplicate it and then switch mm -hmm. it around. Um, there's you could do it either way. It's just so you've done with that same thing with the array and then the curve modifier. Is that right? To get that nice curving backplane thing. Yeah. The trail. Yep. Yeah. All right. Fifteen minutes left. Well, fourteen minutes thirty seconds left. Yeah, I'm definitely struggling without Node Wrangler right now. <laughs> I've, I've almost controlled T a couple times, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> the Iron Menace asks, will Chris be participating in the next Blitz? I don't know if I'm up for the next one, but I'm definitely going to be participating this season. So Don't worry, I'll be in the hot seat. Let's see how Chuck's going. Let's have a look at his... Oh, nice. He's, so he's, you've broken up your, your trail line with yeah. some uh, cool stripes. That's a good way to create a bit of extra texture to your image. It looks good. I wasn't sure if I should you know, continue along the level, but I figure you're probably not going to see it in the render anyway. So mm. yeah, we'll just leave it as it is. I'm going to go and try and focus in on some of the interior of this metal cylinder. Okay, so your strategy is to focus on high detail, right? Just trying to yeah. model in some extra yeah. detail. I got to make another environment piece here just because, like, I need something to break up the first part of the trail from the second part. And nice. got to make a ramp or something. Definitely. There were ramps in Tron, right? Yeah. They were jumping over each other. West has point out. Uh, nerd talk. Tron 1, the bikes only ever went in 90 degree angles. But Tron 2, they had smooth turns. Mostly, I think, probably because the. Uh, I'm trying to imitate Atari games. <laughs> the Iron Minister says, we have to get Chunk to be the announcer next time. He's hilarious. There you hey. go, Chunk. You got to vote for Thank hosting. You. Vote host. Yay. Well, I yeah, either uh, in my real life, I'm not considered very funny. Um, <laughs> on Let's Build It in Blender, I... Uh, I have time to actually kind of prepare jokes, which is nice. The power and, of editing. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, honestly. And so I can actually like, you know, as I'm rewatching my footage and I go, hmm, what's like a funny joke there? And it just kind of, sometimes I uh, say the first thing that comes to mind and um, whether it's funny or not, people kind of like them. People really like the, uh, the puns at the end of the day. And um, they're all original. I, uh, that's a lie. I, I look them up. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> and that like, all your did, you know, unveils. Yeah, unveils a little bit of like behind the mask or something. But uh, I make sure that only the best quality puns make it through. I do have a vetting process. That's good. You have to vet. You have to vet your puns. Well done. Yeah. All right. That looks nice. I do like that. The, the rims that you've created inside there. That's cool. That's definitely going to add a lot to your image, I think. Those yeah, extra details. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. How are you doing those? Are you like control R creating uh, loop cuts? So or? what I'm doing now is, yeah, I'm going ahead and adding a loop cut. It's a little tough to see. So I'll go ahead and, like that, and then I'll bevel it out. Um, and then I'll either, I generally like to do inset and then hold down control and actually like move it in and out as opposed to extruding and then scaling and then constraining it to an axis. Uh, it's just quicker. And now that I've also figured out, right, like if I go into the center here and I hit I and then B, I can constrain it so that it's not going to be like that weird, awkward, well, I'm, I'm pointing at my screen like you can see what I'm talking about. Um, the awkward like center gap here that I'd have to go ahead and then delete. Uh, so I'm trying to use the information that I'm even learning from the uh, Let's Build It in Blender series. And I think that's actually something that uh, not a lot of instructors really talk about. And I'm sure Jonathan and Chris, you both had this. Uh, you actually learn far more by having to teach these than I think a lot of people really gain from, from watching, you know, because you have to really, well, you have to know pretty much what you're doing. And then people are going to tell you like, Hey, your life, you're making it way harder than you really need to. All you have to do is hit the B button and you're like, Oh yes, I've been yeah. using blender for 10 years and I have just discovered this. I always say, if you want to learn blender, start a YouTube channel. If you want to learn anything, really, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Comments will set you straight. Help you yeah, out. that's that's very true. <laughs> it's a nice ramp, Jonathan. So uh, you've edited in a ramp, going for a nice glossy material there. Looks really good. All right, guys, we're down to nine minutes and 40 seconds. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Hmm. The Iron Menace is asking, Chris, have you made courses on CG Cookie? Uh, no, I've got I've got one tutorial on CG Cookie, but all my stuff with CG Cookie lives on the YouTube channel. So the public YouTube channel for everybody else uh, is the stuff that I do with CG Cookie. Me and Chunk are like the uh, we're Team YouTube, so we're the two that are putting together a lot of the uh, the YouTube content uh, now, trying to grow that out. It's a new new endeavor for CG Cookie, building out the YouTube channel. So. Oh, there it is. Now it looks like Tron. Jonathan, yep, bam. Just slap some lights on it. Bam. What if I just so make doing? the entire picture bloom? That makes it the winner, right? That's it. Whoever blooms the most <laughs> in this. Lens flare. All right. So he's selecting that ed edge the, loop uh, and then go. assigning a new material to it. So assigning the glow material to it. Let's have a look over at Chunk's screen again. So he's trying to land his lighting now. So he's actually throwing around some other HDRIs. Having yeah, a bit of a play. I, admittedly, I've never seen Tron either. I know. We've already said it's not shameful, so I, I'm uh, safe There's in no that regard. But a little shameful, it's fine. A little shame, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Elmo oh, asks, so uh, who's driving the bike? That's a good question, Elmo. Who is driving the bike? Oh, well, for my world, bike, nobody. Self-driving. Or These guys are driving true. Bike. Who's driving Blender? What's going on? Who's hosting the show? <laughs> Anybody here? I'm just, I'm just hanging out. I'm just watching this like everyone else. <laughs> Lincoln World says, Chris's latest tutorials in CGK have been really good. Thanks so much, Lincoln World. Appreciate it. It's kind of you. Yeah, they've been fun to put together. i got another one coming out this week on Python, using unlocking the power of Python for Blender animations. If you're ever really? curious I did not about know that, that get ready. It's coming out. It's going to be hot. It's a good one. Probably won't trend as well as any modeling tutorial, but you know, you got to do some. You got to show some Python love to the. Uh, Agreed. That part of the system, it's pretty pretty cool stuff. So, 
Vladis says they're rivals. One should be red and one should be blue. That's a good point. We should designate. Oh, okay. Both, Here, both I'll of be you red. have gone for uh, blue, blue Tron, actually. I'll switch over. I'll go to the dark side. Nice. There it is. Hey, I was gonna make I was gonna make my second orange one. Oh well. Oh, well, I can See, go like I'll fuchsia or something. Two. There. I kind of oh, split the difference a little bit. Looks good. Looks good. Nice. Let's see. Oh, okay, go for the pink. Nice. I like it. I like some sci-fi pink. Yeah. Hi, Patricia is asking, um, what channel? What channel is Jonathan's channel? Jonathan. CG Cookie. CG That's Cookie. Channel. That's right. So if you want to find Jonathan stuff, he's all on CG Cookie. So not on YouTube, but on the uh, the platform itself. So that's a great reminder to throw up. I just love these little things. Like this is great, right? Uh, bam! Check out cgcookie.com. Today's episode brought to you by cgcookie.com. Is it brought to you by it if it's made by it? Probably not. It doesn't work that way, does it? All right, guys, we've got six minutes. Six uh, minutes left. Let's hop over and have a look at what Jonathan's up to. To, What's your uh, current current make objective? That, make that second bike. Okay, so you're trying to get a second bike with the second trail. So you're duplicating your bike and plane. This is where you can really see the power of using modifiers to do stuff like the bike trails. Uh, so the idea here was, I mean, probably not enough time to like actually flush it out. But like the bikes are linked, so if I make change to one, oh nice, the other one, but not the trails. So the trails can be independent and do whatever they want to do. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with that, everybody, um, linking objects is a really powerful thing to do in Blender. If you're modeling something and they're going to be the same, you can uh, you can either duplicate it as a linked object, or after you've made it, you can select them both and you can say link uh, link data. And uh, so it's if you type if you hit F3 to bring up the search menu and just type in link, um, you'll get the list of all the different things you can link. You can link modifiers, constraints, but if you link the data, it's data, correct? Isn't that right, Jonathan? It's the data that you would link to get yeah. the mesh to be the same. Yeah. Um, the mesh will unify, and if you edit one, it'll also change the other. So you can have really great updates going on. It's like treating it like a particle, basically. Um, the same kind of idea. Jake Blended says, honestly, though, all three of you guys are great. Thanks so much, Jake Blended. Appreciate Thanks. the encouragement. Oh, thank you, Jake. Everybody thinks you guys are great. You're doing a good job. Nailing it. You're both going to have a good image when this is done. We can tell already. It's just a matter of what is the final image going to look like. we got four minutes and 20 seconds. Let's see how this other trail is going. So it looks like Jonathan's going for the... Uh, one bike getting ready to smash into the trail of the other, which you know, in the in the film, that's how you that's how you blow up if you run into the trail of the other. It's basically the game of snake. You know that, you know that, you know that game? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, since I have one material for both, uh, I'm just using an object index to uh, change the colors, and hopefully that'll work. Whoa, pro move. Let's see, so he's placing the object index into the factor and bam. So what that means is the object index, every object in Blender has an index number that's kind of hidden under the hood. It's sort of how Blender identifies the different objects. So you can use that to then create uh, variation. So if you've got the same material on two objects and you want to have that same material just live on them, but you want to have something different about them without having to make a whole new material, you can use that object uh, index. What's the node called, Jonathan? These? It's the. Oh, it's. Uh, I think it's the object info. Geom or object info. Yeah. Object info node in the. Shader. Yeah, and it's helpful because now, like these two material or these two models are exactly the same, um, but the they're still different colors. Hmm. Nice color choice. Meanwhile, back over at Chunk, we got the the pink bike of Doom. Looking good. Of Doom. Oh, you've, oh. You've, you've I was thinking more like Triumph, but oh, okay, yeah. Triumph. Sure. I was trying to create like you know this intimidating sounding <laughs> Tron bike. Uh, the pink bike of Happy Fun Times in Candyland. Pink bike of Happy Fun Times. Hooray! Yeah. 
So we've, you've duplicated it. You're going for a, a side by side neck and neck race. Yeah, you know what? I realized I forgot what the actual title of the uh, competition was. So we're going to need to at least have some kind of, um, you know, neck and neck, uh, well, competition, like I said, because, uh, you know, you can't just have one Tron bike if there's, you know, allegedly a wipeout at some point. That's right. Tron wipeout is the theme. So how you interpret it? Now we've got two minutes left, guys. Two minutes. One minute, ah, one no. minute 45 seconds. This is the hot seat time. So get ready. So you're going to have to land your image. We'll call out the countdown. We get close. I cue some music right now, but I haven't learned how to yet. So <laughs> you're going to keep going. I'll do the music. No, I won't do that. No one, will. everyone, will watch okay. the stream count drop. I think that's more intense if you do it. Yeah, that's right. Just, I'll just heavy breathe into the mic. <sighs> Looking good, guys. It's really coming together. I like Chuck's color scheme, <laughs> the green and pink. That's really cool, man. That looks good. Looking really good. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see <laughs> if I remember how to render in Blender. Trey Thomas says, uh, "Chris, you've got a great voice. You would be great and natural on radio or TV. Thanks so much. Great work, Chunk and Jonathan." There you go. You got some great work, guys. Thank you. Now's the time to start throwing your encouragement in chat, everybody. We're down to 50 seconds. Oh, my God. Let the guys know what you think of what they've done. Try and land your final shot. Get your cameras set up. 35 seconds less left to go. Feels so good not to be in the hot seat right now. I'm loving watching two other people do this <laughs> oh nice but it's got a cool little like curve on his bike he's got it like, like tilting like it's gonna fall it looks pretty cool it's, oh nice adding some action to the shot really cool down to 15 seconds chunk is he's got he's got some looks like, like some depth of field did he throw some depth of field on that it looks really crisp look over in chunk's design really cool jonathan is messing around with depth of field and time's up, guys. Mice off. Hands oh, off keyboard. Man. Chewy, chewy sound for the end there. Great work, everybody. Ooh. Let's hear it for the team. Hey. I know you're all clapping at home. Yep. Great job, guys. Let's let's see if I can get a, a little screen up where we can actually see, see both of you. Turn off the timer. Well done. Well done. So full screen your image. Go ahead and full right. screen it. So we can see see it in all of its glory. Oh, I forgot to turn up the what you guys have done. Samples. Oh. Oh. <laughs> There's always like six things you think of that you go, if only. If only. Jonathan, well done. We'll start with you. Good job. Fantastic work. Your image looks amazing. What was your uh what was something about what you made that that really stood out to you that you liked in terms of how it landed? That I liked? Um, I mean, I enjoyed the, yeah. the materials part and the trails. I think that turned out fairly well. Um, the just the transparent glowiness in Eevee is is fun to work with. What would you do if you had more time? If I had more time, uh, fix the bikes, <laughs> make them fix look the like bikes. bikes. So you weren't too happy with the model in the end. What what do you think about the bikes? Would have really kind of taken them up a notch. Um, I mean, I would just model it piece by piece. I'd make the wheels separate and then make each individual like kick casing part rather than making them a big solid. Uh, piece of jello <laughs> looks good though i think you did a great job and Thank the you. shot is really dynamic well done you should be proud of yourself yeah. chunk i love that have a look at you did so oh that's good that's actually that's like sharp it turned out Thanks, man it came out really nice yeah it's, now of course uh, chunk's secret is the fact that there is no more bike beyond the back tire so <laughs> yeah. that was your focus yeah. that was your approach right talk us uh, through yeah uh, so well i was trying to think about uh, like how the heck you're going to model one of these bikes. And I thought, well, you know what? As long as I don't show the front half, I don't have to model it. <laughs> and um, so I just kind of went from there. Had no idea what I was going to do with the rest of it. But um, fortunately, had some decent enough reference, I guess. Like I was saying earlier, man, these bikes have way too many curves on them. So trying to figure <laughs> out how I can take really the only thing I can really do is the centerpiece and then kind of take attention away from the rest of the bike and then focus on the really nice, uh, you know, glossy beams or, uh, emissive beams that we got going on. But 
yeah, it was uh, it was intense. I'll say that my blood pressure is just now slowly coming <laughs> back down to normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet. those those yeah, green that's... space reflections on the bike look super good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they yeah, do. I've had a lot of yeah, work, that really worked. Uh, out. Kind of faking it, it all really in EV. If you had told me like three years yes. ago that this would be like a real time image, I'd be like, no, it's not going to happen. Would yeah, never believed honestly. It would have never believed it either. Well, gun guys, like both these images look fantastic. You should be very proud of yourselves. Tell us one more time where we can find each of you. Chunk, real quick, where are you on the internet? Uh, so, um, well, I'm on CG Cookie with the Let's Build It in Blender series as well. I have my own YouTube channel, Get Learnt, where I teach. Uh, more game development stuff um, and predominantly substance designer. So if you're interested in doing materials, textures, that kind of stuff, you can check me out. Cool. Jonathan, where can we find you? Anything you're excited about you're working on right now? Yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at John Lampel at both and I'm on CG Cookie. I'm working on a texturing course that I'm pretty excited about, about three quarters of the way through. It should be done in, in March and uh, a few, few good ideas after that that I'm pretty hyped about, but can't say that quite yet. Top secret. Nice, nice. And I'm Chris Bailey. Once again, your host. Thanks again for watching. You can find me at C Bailey Film on YouTube. That's where I've got my YouTube channel for Blender tutorials. And then I'm also with CG Cookie. I've got a new tutorial coming out this week there about Python and animation. So stay tuned for that. And as always, stay tuned for the next Sci-Fi Blitz episode. We'll have the next one coming out, not next week, but the week after. So every second week, these things are going to air. And every week, we're going to bring you two new Blender artists to go head-to-head, -head, along with a new theme. So keep an eye out for the poll, which will launch shortly before each episode, so you can vote live, get the results in, and then watch the two artists go head-to-head -to, -head to try and make it. So thanks again, everybody in chat. Throw a clap in chat for our contestants today. I think they did a fantastic job. Really, really awesome work, everybody. Thanks again for watching today, and we'll catch you in the next tutorial slash live stream slash competition slash YouTube channel thing. Let's wave goodbye, guys. See ya. Adios. <laughs> that was super fun. Bye, See you guys. guys. Thanks, everybody. Now, how do I end this? Oh.